Welcome back to another Friday Functions video. This is a bonus video for this week because you saw my video a day early. So I'm going to go ahead and post another one as a bonus for Friday. This one will be talking about using update context. Update context is a function that we use in order to set a local variable. Now it's important to recognize that it is truly contextual as the name implies, which means when I use update context to set a local variable, that variable just works on that screen. So when you want to set a variable that it can work on every screen or more than one screen in your app, then you might want to use set, S-E-T, which is a global variable. And I'll talk about that in another video. Today, I'm going to talk about using a local variable. And we're going to do something fun with it today. We're going to make our own control. So that'll be kind of fun. So the first thing I'm going to do, all I did was start a new app that's blank. There's no data or anything because we don't need it for this particular demo. And I'm going to go ahead and insert a text input. So here's my idea. I'm going to make a control that will be used to collect numbers from my user. So my user, and I'm going to make this way bigger so that when we play this app, it kind of takes control of this screen. We're going to make a control that has a huge number in it. And I don't know if you knew you can type in here, in addition to the numbers that are visible, you can type. I'm going to set the default value for this text uh, control to zero for now. But that's not going to actually be the default value. You're going to see we're going to change that to a contextual variable. Right now it's going to be zero, just so I can see how to format this. And then I'm going to center it. Now the control I want to make here is I actually want to put two arrows on the right side of this, an up arrow and a down arrow. And when you tap the up arrow, it'll increase the number. When you tap the down arrow, it'll decrease the number. I bet you've seen controls like that in other mobile apps. Their whole purpose is to make it easy for someone to increase or decrease numbers without having to pull up their keyboard okay, on their phone. So I don't know if you noticed, but we added some new icons to your list of icons. So please remember to check them out. But today I'm going to use the up and the down arrow. So I'm going to add both of those, icon down and arrow up. So arrow up and arrow down. And I'm going to put, put them on the, on the right side of this control. Now here's where I'm going to use a little bit of relative positioning here. So I'm going to put them both over here and I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to set the height of them. So let's watch how I do this. I'm going to set the height to, and I'm going to rename text input one too. So text input one, which is where that zero is. I'm going to take that height and divide it by two. Okay. So that's going to give me a perfectly matched height. Then we're going to change the width as well. So I'm just going to move this so it's aligned bottom. So one is aligned bottom and one is aligned top. And then as far as the width goes, the width on this one, so I'm going to rename these. Let's rename this one icon up and use that notification. The other one, we're going to name that icon down. And then we're going to name the text input box input count. Okay. So now we have things that we can read. Now I'm going to set the width of this to the same as icon up. So I'm just going to go get the width. And I'm going to say the width should be the same as icon up dot width so that now they are they are matching in width and in height now i can control click and i just want to show you that i can use my home screen to align these center okay now if you look very closely though i did catch that the graphic is a little off even though the boxes are aligned center the arrows are a little off 
not a problem. What I'm going to do is just click to the left and then inch these this over so that they look more like they are aligned. And, you know, I can be pretty, I don't know if I can say the word anal, but I'm a little picky about how my screen looks. You might not be as picky. And I'm also going to change the theme because I'm real tired of the blue. So I'm going to go to gray because I like that soft gray. You may want to try a theme that, that has a little bit of a background to get more contrast if you like. But I really like the gray. So I'm going to stick with the gray. I'm going to make my number um, bigger. I think I forgot to do that. I thought I planned to do it anyway. And I'm going to make it bold. Okay. So now everything is nice and clear. All right. Now, this is the control functionality that I want to do here is that when I click on, when I tap on this with my finger, I want that number to go up one. So I'm going to go to my on select. So anytime you want an action to occur, when you tap on something, it's probably going to be your on select property. And I'm going to create an, a contextual variable. So I'm going to type update context, and you'll see it at the top. And then I'm going to open a squiggly. Now, if you want to not forget, do your close squiggly and your close paren. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I've done here. Hopefully it will zoom. Yep, it's zooming. You can see that I typed my open paren, my open squiggly, my close squiggly, and my close paren. It just helps me not to forget. Now I'm going to name my variable, and I'm going to call it my input number, right? Now, I could have called it number or count, but those things risk to be functions. And so I like to start my names with my or something to do with the business scenario so that I'm sure I don't look just like another function, which makes it really hard to read the functions, right? So I'm going to set this my input number to my input number so I can actually use it in my calculation plus one. So now what I'm saying is whenever I press that up arrow, the variable called my input number will go up one. Now I'm going to copy this because I bet you can already guess what I'm going to do with the down arrow, right? It doesn't take too much of rocket science to do that. We're just going to select that one, get the same on select property, paste what we did on the up arrow, and just inverse it, right? So now we're going to say minus, right? So when I press the down arrow with my finger, the number is going to go down one. Now, to get this variable to show up here, right, all I'm going to do is set the default value of this to our variable, right? And don't worry, you're not going to see that zero right away, but I'm going to set it to our variable. Now, when I'm using it as a reference, in other words, as a value, I don't need update context. I just need the name that I gave it. So in this case, I don't need to say update, update context because I'm not really changing the number. All I'm doing is saying, I want you to show me in this label right here, which actually to be this text input box, I want you to show me what my input number currently equals. And that will be the default value. Now, someone could highlight it and change it, but that's what the default value will be. So now if I run this app, and then I hit this up arrow, it goes up by one. And every time, and I, I can use my finger as well as my mouse. Right now I'm using my finger, just in case you're wondering. And I can hit the down arrow to go down. And isn't that cool? We just made our own control. I tell you, we are just off the top creative today. All right, so now we've got that working. Here's another tip here. This can be very business scenario focused. Perhaps in my organization, we want to increment a meter of some kind. And the meter doesn't go up by one. It goes up by 10.2. That's, that's the variance, right? So we never increment other than 10.2. We can get very, very um, specific about how this goes up or down. So now when I hit the up arrow, it goes up 10.2 or it goes down 10.2. And you can do this in order to really um, create a very business specific increment, 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 increment in when they're pressing the arrows. And look at that. We made our own control. Isn't that cool? 
functions are awesome. Try them out. Give it a go. There's, there's no end to what you can create to work in your business. Enjoy. And I hope you're, you're really using these Friday functions in your own business. Happy weekend.